Welcome back to episode two of our absentee voting series. In this episode, I'll be going over how your specific absentee ballot packet is constructed and issued to you based on your ballot request form that we talked about in episode one. Once your absentee ballot request is received, properly signed and before the deadline, your county clerk will verify your voter registration status and eligibility by checking all of your information against the state voter registration system. This ensures that you've not already been issued an absentee ballot and lets the county know which ballot to issue based on your address. If all of the information checks out, they'll prepare a packet consisting of a ballot, an internal secrecy envelope, an external return envelope, and an instructions page ready to send to the delivery address you requested. Depending on the size of the jurisdiction, officials may hand stuff these packets on site or send them to a fulfillment house that does the work for them and provides them with tracking and audit information. Regardless, extensive care is taken to ensure that each of the unique pieces required for a successful absentee voting experience gets included in the absentee ballot packet and that all supplies used are carefully inventoried for security purposes. It is important to note that counties won't ship ballots out to the mailing address provided on your application any earlier than 30 to 40 days before the election. If you are requesting your ballot closer to the election, you can expect a five to seven day turn time plus mailing time, so be sure to plan ahead. When you receive your packet from your election official, it's once again your turn in the process. Because details matter, when you receive your packet, be careful not to lose any of its components or mix your packet with anyone else's in the home. Photocopies of ballots are not acceptable and the return envelope is specifically tied to your voter record for security. We'll cover these items more in future episodes. If you'd like to learn more about the correct way to mark and return your ballot or what to do with your absentee ballot if you make a mistake marking it, follow me to the next episode where I'll break down that step. Until then, as the friends say, adieu.